Hi, this is Randy from Fried Eggs Golf, and welcome to Hard Boil, the segment where I sit on an ugly couch and give you my opinion on golf equipment in the market. Now, today's equipment is actually two pieces of equipment. It is the OGO Silencer Stand and Cart Bag. I've had a lot of requests to do a review on this, so I wanted to let you guys know my opinion. Now, the OGO Silencer bags have some pretty cool technology, and I'll get to that in just one second. But before I do, so you don't waste your time watching this review, if you're one of those people that sit down to dinner and you absolutely hate it when your peas touch your mashed potatoes, watch no more. These are the bags for you. Well, you guys all know how hard boil works. Basically, I take a product, I list the features and benefits of that product, and then I tell you what I think about that product. Well, in last week's episode of Over Easy, I told you guys that I wanted to give you a more dynamic review. So what I've done with the OGO silencer, cart, and stand bag is I actually took them out on the course in some real world situations to give you guys a little bit better understanding if you're actually interested in one of these products. So without any further delay, let's go ahead and jump right into the review. Let's start with the OGO Silencer stand bag. The OGO Silencer bag is called so because of this unique feature that it has where it has a 14-way polymer top that divides the clubs up as they go down into the bag, but also sitting on the bottom of the bag is a molded locking base. So when you stick a club down through this polymer top, it kind of holds it in place there, but also it clips into the bottom of the bag. So basically, when the bag is moving, the clubs are locked into place and they don't wiggle around, they don't bang together, and believe it or not, they don't fall out of the bag. It also has a fleece line valuable pack, which is kind of standard as far as bags go. There's also an insulated water bottle pocket in the bag where you could put a water bottle down in there and actually a, a fairly good size one too, but you wouldn't want to put any ice because there's not a drainage port. So if that ice was to melt, all that water would just sit in the bottom of the bag and you'd have to dry it out or clean it out in some way. The stand bag also features this airflow system on the side of it where it would rest on your back while you're carrying it like a book bag. It's just a little slot cut into the pad there that allows air to kind of travel through there to kind of cool you off and not make you perspire as much. Also, the padding on the back here is substantial. It's one of the thickest pads I've felt on a bag, which is, is awesome because that's usually where you feel most of the pressure when you're carrying your bag is obviously on your shoulders, but then your back where that's constantly rubbing. Now the stand bag is a little bit on the heavy side, weighing almost six pounds, which if you think about other carry bags in the market, they're usually around four, but you're sacrificing some of that weight for some of the features and benefits of this bag. So that's really up to you. Moving on to the cart bag. Now, the OGO Silencer cart bag, uh, it has a lot more pockets, a lot less features. And we've already kind of touched on all the features from the stand bag. You know, you have your divided top, and then you also have the molded bottom there to hold the clubs in place. That technology is consistent between the two. Now, if you look at the top of the cart bag, you'll see that it's divided more symmetrically. You have a much bigger putter well there, which I'm not really sure why it needs to be that big, but you know, you have some pretty big putter grips now. now on both bags, it's important to note that the putters do not lock in. If you put like a super stroke down in there, I mean, it would be hard to make a super stroke and like a, a pistol grip stick into the same slot. So they just avoided that feature on there, I think, which I'm not sure. I wish I would have tested. I, it feels like standard size, midsize, midsize is probably the largest grip you'd want to use on this bag. If you tried to use like a jumbo I think you would have some, it would get kind of lodged down there or it wouldn't, it wouldn't work as it's intended to. But back to the cart bag, the bag has a lot more pockets to it. Now there is an actual cooler compartment where you have a drainage pour at the bottom of it there. So if you were to fill it full of ice, uh, it, it would drain out and then you could easily put uh, six cans of something in there. Other than that, the, the bags seem to be pretty sound. Uh, they seem to have a very well working mechanism in them as far as loading them up full of clubs, turning them upside down. They seem to hold the clubs as they intend to. But like I stated before, it's one thing for me to just put clubs in a golf bag in my basement and turn them upside down and say, hey, this thing works great. So what I did is I took both of these bags out to the course to help give you a little better perspective of how they work in real life. So. Check it out. All right, so we're here at the golf course. I have both bags with me. We're gonna put them through a series of tests to see how they perform in real world situations. Uh, I've devised a couple to kind of give you a better idea of how each bag performs in its given field. So uh, I have a golf cart here. I brought my one wheel to, to do some one wheel testing. Uh, but other than that, let's uh, initiate test one, which is transport, transportability, tra get the bags out of the trunk. So while initiating test one, 
Uh, this was not meant to be in the video, I just stumbled upon it. When I went to remove my bag from the trunk, usually it's not a problem, but since it's so full, I went to pull it out and the, and the woods got caught. So naturally I tried sliding it back and it wouldn't go any further. So next step is to tilt it and then pull it out. In doing so, I dumped a lot of clubs out of the bag and then they get all jammed up and then they're hard to put back in. So. Uh, let, let's keep that in mind. All right, now we're gonna officially start test number one by removing the silencer stand bag from my cart, kind of in the same fashion that I did my bag, just to show you the, the benefits of having that gripping technology at the bottom of the bag. So you can see at the top here, it has this plastic handle that it's pretty sturdy, pretty firm, gives you a good gripping spot to lift the bag out. And then also you have this uh, strap down here at the bottom to grab to kind of help you just lift the bag straight out, which is, it's nice, convenient, it's pretty standard on all bags now. But uh, keep in mind the putter it does not lock in like I stated before. So if, if you're lifting this out and you just you know kind of put a finger or two on that putter, you go to lift it, let's just go ahead and tilt it. Yeah, see, so you can go a full 90 degrees there and you're not gonna have to worry about any clubs sliding out or any jamming like that. So uh, that's pretty cool. Obviously I don't have the cart bag loaded up yet, but I do wanna show you something that kind of bothers me about the cart bag and I'm not sure why they designed it this way but they don't really give you a top handle up here to grab onto. I mean, you have something on the putter well you can grab here or behind the putter well, but keep in mind, you're gonna have a putter here with a, you know, a pretty decent sized head cover. So it might be hard to grab that or get a hold of that. And it really forces you to use this handle. That's one thing I don't like about the cart bag already. Obviously once it's loaded up, it's gonna have the same ability to, to, to turn 90 degrees and not have to worry about clubs falling out. But right away, that's something that stands out that I don't like. I like to have that handle to grab onto here to, to lift the bag out by. Now we got the bags out of the trunk. Let's load them onto the car. I will tell you that it is strange to uh, be transporting a bag and not hear anything. It's just, I guess silencer was the right name, but let's put it on the cart. So uh, it seems to fit in nicely. Now they do feature these cart straps on each side of the bag that feed behind the pockets. That way you have access to all your pockets while you're on the cart. So let's feed that through here. See how well this functions. So slide through there, underneath the strap, and then this runs over the back support pad there and fastens down. One thing I will point out that I miss so much about OGO bags is they used to have this thing called a torsion strap and it would actually fasten to this cage back here and it would just give you a little bit more like of a lockdown feeling like the bag wasn't going to go anywhere. Actually, you could undo this strap and the bag would still stay there. So uh, kind of uh, eliminate any of those uh, jerks trying to pull the bag prank on you and dump your bag. So now that we have the stand bag up on the cart, let's go ahead and put the cart bag up there. You can see I've fully loaded it with my clubs and once again with the exclusion of the putter every club is locked in and secure so it's just weird not to hear the clubs rattling around while you're moving them. Just like the stand bag once again you're going to have designated slots behind the pocket so you keep access to them and you can slide the straps through go under the handle and then you have a little port there on the other side for the strap and then that should lock in fits well once again a little wobbly i don't know why they got rid of that torsion strap i feel like that was that would keep that from happening that that wobbling because the bag itself as far as the rigidity of each bag it feels like the stand bag has more rigidness to it where the cart bag is a little floppier and if i tighten that down anymore i'm going to start to kind of constrict the clubs in the bag i feel like everything seems to to come out okay and go back in okay not a lot of problems there. Let's go ahead and try this. Yeah, even though I've got the bag squeezed in at the top fairly tight, feels like they're going in. I just realized I have two drivers in this bag. Oh well. I like the look of the cart bag, the way the clubs all face the, the back of the cart here. Obviously with the stand bag, the, <laughs> you're trying to have those clubs face you as the stand is down so it makes sense for them not to face backwards but I do like the way that all these clubs are presented it looks very nice and clean and once again they just they don't wobble so now we have both bags up on the car we're going to go out on the course now we're going to run through a couple other tests up next is the silencer test I have found the biggest potholes I could find on the course I'm going to drive over them and we're going to listen in to see how well these silencer bags work so let's go pothole number one number two 
Wow, yeah. Uh, I heard my one wheel more than I heard the clubs. Uh, test two complete. So that pretty much wraps up the on-course testing for the cart bag. Now what I want to do is I want to put the stand bag through a couple more tests because obviously there's a couple more features and benefits and I want you guys to know exactly what you can expect from this bag when you take it out on the course to either walk or use on a golf board or one wheel. So test number one is the movement test. Now this last test I realize for most of you is irrelevant, but people have started to use these golf boards out on the golf course, or the one wheel, and I wanted to carry this bag around with the one wheel to kind of simulate how it handles on the board. But before I get to that, I do want to point out that during the movement test, this is the coolest thing ever. When I started to bounce around, you see that kind of shock system there on the strap? So as I start to move up and down, this kind of absorbs some of that blow. Pretty cool. All right, commencing one wheel test. Here we go. So obviously, smooth through the fairway. When I'm banking, it feels pretty smooth. Everything feels stable. The straps, like I said, I like that suspension system that I'm feeling, so when I do hit those minor bumps, it doesn't feel like the bag's pulling me down as hard. It's kind of a neat little feature. Let's go find some bumpier terrain. All right, I got a good little root system here we're gonna go over, here we go. Yeah, I like it, handles well. All right, we're back on the ugly couch, but before I give you my conclusion on both bags, I do want to let you know that I have owned an OGO bag in the past, and it was one of my favorite, I think it was like the Grom? I don't know if that's right or not, but it was one of my favorite bags I ever owned, and my two favorite features on that bag is actually something that they got rid of on these bags, and I don't know why they did. One was the easy access ball pocket. It used to have a little flap where it was kind of reinforced with some uh, bars that when you would pull the flap open and get a ball out, you just let go and it would close itself and you could get in there just easy. You didn't have to do any unzipping or anything like that. I thought that was cool. The other thing, as I alluded on the on-course video, is they used to make a torsion strap that would uh, go around the cart, the cage on the cart, and it would actually hold the bag in place. So even if someone undid the strap, it would hold it there. So it just gave it a little bit more security. I don't know why they got rid of those. Those are really cool features that I've only ever seen on OGO bags. But let's move on to the conclusion. So in wrapping it up here, it's really up to you. Whether you like to ride a lot, whether you like to walk a lot, Having said that, I think I would still go stand bag even if you rode a cart a lot because it fits on the cart nicely. It's got the 14-way top divider. It's easier to carry around. It's easier to get out of the car because you can just set it up. You don't ever have to worry about laying this bag down or about it falling over. I just feel like it's a better made bag. I feel like it serves all the purposes that you would want with the cart bag. I just think the cart bag has more pockets. So if you're one of those people that carry your life around with you inside your golf bag, or you like to bring your own beverages, uh, those are the only two benefits I see where the silencer cart bag outweighs the stand bag. So hopefully you enjoyed this review. Uh, let me know what you think in the comment section below. If you're interested in buying one of these bags, if you have any questions that I didn't answer, put them down below. I'll try to get back to you as soon as I possibly can. But uh, thank you for watching as always. Subscribe to the channel, thumbs up the video, and I will see you guys next time.